today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Psalms 138. Uh, all these nice little poems that are in here that I believe that uh, were written in here, and they're also they're also wonderful. I was going through some of them today, and I thought maybe maybe I could uh, you know say a couple of them to get us through the day. You can get your Bibles out, but before you do that, let's let's say a prayer. Or oh, Lord who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive those who trespass, and forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom. I always say the glory. Amen. Um, o Lord, who art in heaven. This is a prayer that Jesus said. He's talking to his father. O Lord, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. So he's praising his father's name. Hallowed be thy name. That means the most high. You are the most high. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. He's doing God's will. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, which means give us something spiritual, something holy. Forgive those who trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See? For thy is the kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Psalms 138. This is the some of the poems I believe that David wrote. There's so many of them. Psalms is so. I will praise you with all my heart in the face of other gods. See that? I will praise you with all my heart in the face of other gods. These could be other beings that are below, that are below God, but yet higher than us. Okay, you never know who they could be. I will sing and praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple, and I will praise your name because of your loyal love and for your faithfulness, for you have magnified your sayings and your name. Above everything else. See, God, there's only one God and He is above everything else. On the day I call you, um, answer me. You made me bold and strong. So call on Him. He wants us to call on Him. Okay? Number four, 138. Psalms 138, 4. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Jehovah, for they will have heard the promise you have spoken. They will sing about the ways of Jehovah. Now, that's another name for, for God, God's true name. In Hebrew, you've got Yahweh. And, and you translate that, and it comes into Jehovah which means I cause things to become. You ever, you ever heard that word, hallelujah? Well, take a good close and spell out that word, and you're going to see it's pretty close to Jehovah, isn't it? Okay, I want to talk about free will. God has sent you to this earth for, to experience the things that he wants you to experience. And he's given you free will. You have free will to learn about him, accept him into your heart as your personal savior, have a relationship with him through studying the Bible. 
which you will gain a relationship with him by reading his word. His Matthew, you learn all about Jesus from Matthew on. Uh, when you read all 66 of his books, you will have some kind of attachment to uh, Jesus and the things that he's done for you. How could you not fall in love with him? I know I did in 1984, where I accepted Jesus Christ in my heart in a guard shack in Beverly Hills. It belonged to Johnny Carson's ex-wife, one of his ex-wives, where I worked as a security guard in a guard shack, and I would watch the Jim Baker show. And we all know what happened to Jim Baker. He got arrested, but he did put out the message of Jesus Christ. And I heard when he got out, years later, he was back into studying the Word of God again. So we can't, a man falls, a man makes mistakes, and he gets back up again. God gives you free will. You go out, become a murderer, and, and do all these wrong things, and do whatever the heck you want to do with your life without a care in the world. Or you can listen to that voice telling you to learn about Jesus Christ. Accept him as your personal Savior, because when you leave your body one day, and you will, you'll be in darkness if you don't know Jesus Christ. You'll have demons grabbing at your feet, wanting to tear at you in that realm that you're, past, you're passing through. And you're going to need to cry out to him, Jesus, I love you. Help me. Get me away from these people. Because you're going to travel. You're going to travel through the light to where God's kingdom is. And I posted a couple of videos of some people that experienced that. And they were able to go to God's kingdom. And they saw it. Uh, this one lady saw it as a little planet somewhere. It's out there. How do we get there? If you don't accept Jesus Christ in your life, if you ignore him and you don't believe in him, all he wants you to do is learn to love him. He created you. You're his. You belong to him. Belong to God. Jesus came down here and gave us a message. God sent him down here as a representative. I come as your as representative. And he did the work. And he explained to everybody what the kingdom of God was. That how it has many mansions. I believe that kingdom of God is also in your heart. Just as well as it is up in heaven, in space somewhere, there is a connection. All these UFOs that are flying around out there and all that other stuff. I believe those are those are superior demon beings that are from different planets and different places. Some may be good and have God in their heart and others may have evil. I don't know. God created other worlds besides ours. I believe that. There are other planets out there. There are other people out there somewhere. I wonder, do they know about Jesus also? Maybe they do. But God gives us free will to either accept him in our hearts or not. And people wonder, why is there so much war? Why is there so much fighting going on? Why doesn't Jesus come now with all the things that are going on, with the children that are starving, that are dying? God wants one more person to accept Jesus Christ in their heart. And he's given us enough time for that. He wants everyone, as many people as they can, to know about him. He's got his own timeline. A thousand years is one day to the Lord. And one day to the Lord is a thousand years. So what may seem one day to you is a thousand years to him. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Bible does talk about a rapture that's in there, about how two will be in the field and one will be taken. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ and you're in a vehicle and the other person next to you does believe in Christ and you're not at the wheel and he is, 
he disappears and the rapture comes. Who's going to drive the car? You're in the passenger seat. You crash. That's it. If you've got a hole in your heart, someone has hurt you or, or something has happened to you in the past to cause you to want to drink too much or want to take drugs or smoke pot or, or uh, though they are finding out that does help people nowadays, uh, chemical research, healing. So they're finding out about that herb and I'll speak more about that later on because I do believe that herb has helped people to live thousands of years if it's made a certain way. They had that idea back then of how to make such a, 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 a some kind of formula that they made that was healing people and doing everything. And, it, and a part of it was that. But that's another story. He gives us free will. And he's given you enough time to accept him in your heart. If they come to your door knocking, and you refuse to study with him, that's one way he's given you a chance to learn about him. Oh, I think of the years and years as a teenager that I turned to witnesses. And, um, I call them God's witnesses that come to your door, Jehovah's witnesses. People go, oh, there comes Jehovah's witnesses. Well, you got to understand that word Jehovah means it's they're just God's witnesses. They're witnessing to you what's in the Bible, period. They're using the name Jehovah because it seems strange to you, but it's really what's in the Bible, in the Hebrew text. Yahweh's witnesses, you can say that. That's why it's so odd. My only disagreement with them, after studying for so many years and learning about the Bible over and over again, each book, by book, by book, until you get to the end of the 66 and you start over again, you learn so much from the from. Jehovah's Witnesses about the Bible. You have, you have no idea the, the work and the, how much they study, how they dissect page by page and book by book. You learn a lot. And then you move on. I did not, I refuse to believe, uh, what stopped me from studying with them is I refuse to believe that you, you die and, you, and there's nothing else that happens. That you're just asleep until Jesus wakes you. I refuse to believe that. And that's kind of what got me away from them a little bit. But that shouldn't stop you from learning everything else. And I did. I've been on three Catholic re re retreats, thanks to Juan Scott, who came into my life and helped me to receive the Holy Spirit part of, of, of what Jesus is all about. To feel that Holy Spirit. And on those three retreats, boy, did I ever. You can learn all you want about the Bible. You can go to church all you want to. Read all you want to. But if you're not feeling the Holy Spirit, if you're not feeling Jesus in your heart, it's a waste of time. you got to really accept him in your heart. you, you got to really know he's there. And man, now it's three days time that I learned. I learned it's, it's like he's standing next to me. He's standing next to me right now. He's standing right now, right now. He's standing right next to me. I know he is. I can feel him. I can feel him. And when you can feel him next to you, then you know by studying God's word that he knocks you on your butt with his Holy Spirit. He brings tears to your eyes. Then you know. Um, I don't need his glasses at the moment because I'm not reading anything. But he gives you free will. You've got enough time to, to learn about Jesus Christ. Don't waste it. Accept him in your heart today. Get on your knees at night. Light a candle. You know, and, and pray. And most of all, ask him for forgiveness. That's very important. You must break down with tears and ask for forgiveness. God, forgive me for saying this to my wife and or saying this to my dad, or saying this to a brother. Uh, uh, forgive me for how I've treated a brother because he did something wrong to me. I should not hold it against them because I should show love to him for what he has done. Love him anyways because he's just a child of God. Like everybody else, he makes mistakes. 
don't don't go to church knowing that you have upset somebody else or that you've done wrong to somebody else. Go and 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 say, I forgive you, brother, for what you've done. And then go to church. You know? But ask God for forgiveness, you know, for everything that you've done wrong or what you might do wrong in the future. Forgive me, Lord. Get on your knees. Forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead. I believe in you. I Most important, I give you my life. Take my life. Be my personal Savior. Guide my life. I can't do it anymore. I'm on these drugs, or I drink too much alcohol, or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And some of you have got porn addictions that are out there, and I know you do. Or looking at pretty women that are out there, or girls that walk down the street. We all have these problems. You know, and all of us do. We got problems. You know, I'll look at a nice girl walking down the street, and I got to remind myself, hey, you know, you know, be cool. You know? Or I'll see a nice girl on Facebook. Wow. I believe there's plenty of them that are gorgeous. But I got to remember. Oh, my heart. Come on. Cool it. Cool it. Chill out, dude. Remember, you're a child of God and you got to stay on track. But I believe God's got a plan for me to meet somebody one day. Even and he knows I'm having problems in my marriage, which I have to pray for. I've been separated for over five years and I'm not afraid to admit it. I sleep in my own room. While the other person sleeps in another room. You're asking, well, why is she still here? Because we have kids. And our love for our children and our love for our grandson that lives next door. Plain, simple. But we live separate lives. I believe God's got a plan for me to meet the right person when the time comes. And God has a plan for her to meet somebody who is. If you can't be together, then you must find a way to, to be happy. Getting back to the Bible, get on your knees at night, ask God for forgiveness, ask him to come into your heart, be your personal savior, and then start reading. You can start from the beginning of the Bible, or you can start from, from, uh, from Matthew and learn about the story of Jesus Christ and how everything pretty much got started. You can find a church and start going to church. I'm not asking you to stay with one church because... I've studied from so many different things. It's unbelievable. Years and years with Jehovah, uh, God's witnesses, I will, I will call him that. And uh, I've studied the Catholic Church. I've studied with them. And, and everything, all roads lead to heaven. I've studied Buddhism. If it's, a, if it's some other religion that's out there, they're all these religions, all of them all lead to one place. All of these religions here, they come together and they all basically lead to one place. Ask yourself, well, what do I need to learn about God for? I don't know. I'm an atheist. I'm this. God is love. People ask me, well, what is God? What is Jesus Christ? What are they... What are they representing? What are they about? What is the Bible about? It's about love. What was Jesus? What did Jesus do when he was down here? Because of the love for you, he allowed to be nailed on the cross. And what the Romans did to him before he was nailed on the cross with whips, with hooks on the end of them to dig in your flesh and rip it off your body. The thorns that they put on his head, the humiliation that he had to go through, but he had he obeyed his father in heaven. He obeyed, he came down and he obeyed. He knew he was gonna have to go through this because of his love for mankind to have that one chance to believe in him and what he's done for you so that you may go to heaven one day. How can you not love a man who allowed himself to be nailed on the cross. And be humiliated. He did it for you. 
and for everyone before you, for everyone that's passed away, for everyone in the future, from the past. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that through him you may be saved. In the twinkle of an eye, when you die, you're with God. Or you could be somewhere else. You could be in hell. And let me tell you, brother, it's not a very nice place. It's a place of eternal torture. It's a place where de demons constantly curse God and constantly inflict pain on you and laugh at you and humiliate you. Oh, we have to stay down here and, and we can't be in heaven. But you, <laughs> you fool, you had a chance to go be with God, but you didn't take it. You took a life of crime and murder and rape and drugs and this and that. <laughs> oh, and then they'll torture you down there like you would not believe and you will be burning in fire every day. You don't, it, it smells down there. When you're down there, it's like being in a smoke. I ever went to a barbecue and smelled that smoke, how it gets in your throat. That's what the air is down there. You can't even breathe the air down there. Oh, you're going to have all those senses, believe me. When you leave your body, you may not be able to have, uh, to speak to somebody. But telepathically, you'll be able to have conversations to whatever is out there. Oh, yeah. You'll have your senses when you leave that body. You'll have, you'll, they'll, they'll be there. You know, so you don't want to end up down there. I sure don't. So we must believe in Jesus Christ. We must learn about him. Learn what he's done for us. Read your Bible. Find a church. Uh, I myself need to find one too. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. But we have to keep trying. We have to keep getting back on that horse. And get back up on that saddle and try again. You know? Just get back up there and try again. That's all I can tell you. You know? Look at this. I turn to this page, and the first thing I see is, is Isaiah 17. Isaiah 45, verse 17. The makers of idols will all go off in disgrace, but Israel will be saved by Jehovah with everlasting salvation. And look what they're trying to do to Israel now. Russia and uh, Iran trying to destroy Israel, but they just can't do it. And God is not going to allow them to do that. You know, you will not be put to shame or disgrace from all eternity, for this is what Jehovah says, the creator of the heavens, the, the true God. The one who has formed the earth its maker, who firmly established it, who did not create it simply for nothing, but formed it to be inhabited. I am Jehovah, and there is no one else. I did not speak in concealed place in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me simply for nothing. See? I am Jehovah who speaks with what is righteous and declares what is upright. Gather together and come approach together. Wonderful. Read, read Isaiah 45 verse 17. Read it on down to 19 and 20. So that's one thing that's wonderful about the Bible is that it predicts everything Everything that has happened in the Bible has come true. The predictions of when Jesus was going to be uh, on the cross, everything has come true. You can depend on the Bible 
100% compared to a newspaper. And you will learn how everything was prophesied through all 66 books of the Bible of Jesus arriving from Genesis uh, which is which I think I had a, book, a Bible study on Genesis once before and uh, give you an idea hold on I'll give you an idea pay very very close attention to this because you will learn the whole thing about the, the whole Bible from actually from Genesis from the very beginning you will know what the outcome is going to be okay when they ate the when the the woman who gave to me she gave me the fruit from the tree so I ate it this is Genesis 3:13 Jehovah God then said to the woman what is this that you have done? And the woman replied, The serpent deceived me. So I ate it. So the serpent lied. That was the very first lie in the whole world that was ever created. Now then Jehovah said to the serpent, which is one of Satan's workers, and this is symbolic, because you have done this, you are cursed. One out of all the domestic animals and out of all the wild animals of the field, on your belly you will go and you will eat dust all the days of your life now if you listen to this in 15 i will put empathy between you and the woman now this part here where it says woman means heavenly organization jesus christ is heavenly organization the woman is a heavenly organization Read this again in 15. I will put empathy between you and the woman and between your offspring, which is demons that are will be on the earth, right? And her offspring, which is the offspring from, from uh, Jesus Christ forward and all the Christians that come after that. He will crush your head. That's Jesus. And you will strike him in the heel. That's the devil. You'll only be able to strike Jesus in the heel. Now, when you go to 16, he's talking about another woman. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase the pain of your pregnancy. In the pain you will give birth to children and your will be for your husband and he will dominate you. And he talks about the offspring of Adam. So there's two women that he's talking about here. A lot of people tell me, no, no, he's only talking about one woman. No, he's not. He's not. And I will put empathy between you and the woman. Okay? And between your offspring, which is the devil's offspring, and her offspring. Jesus Christ's offspring. He will crush your head. Okay? Your offspring and her offspring. He will crush you in the head. So Jesus Christ's offspring will crush the devil in his head. And you will strike him in the heel. You notice that? In the heel of the foot. You notice how he did how the devil wasn't allowed to strike any bones in his body or anything else? And when you go to 16, it says right here, to the woman, he said, I will greatly increase her pains and pregnancy. So there's two women that he's talking about in here. One of them is heavenly organization and the devil's organization. And then he goes and talks about another woman, the one who sinned and had her eyes open in the Garden of Eden when they ate the apple. It says that you were no that you were uh, no longer naked. You know. So that their eyes were open. I think their eyes were open to knowledge. They knew about a lot of things. 
So you see, it sums it all up right there. And when you get into Revelations 21, Revelations 21, which I will find in a minute, stand by. When you go to Revelations 21, you're going to see how this ties into Genesis. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away. The sea is no more. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. Now remember, this was the first woman. He's talking about a heavenly organization here. A new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, okay, ordained for her husband. Prepared as a bride, this heavenly organization. What is a bride? The woman. Now we're getting symbolic again. For her husband. What is the husband part? Jesus Christ. With that, I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, the tent of God is with all mankind. And he will reside with them, and he will be his people. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and he will wipe out every tear from your, their eyes. And death will be no more. Neither will there be mourning, nor outcry, or pain anymore. The former things have passed away. And the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. Also, he says, Write this, for these words are faithful and true. Okay. And six. And he said to me, They have come to pass. I am the Alpha, and I am the Omega the beginning and the end. Anyone thirsting, I will give them the spring of waters of life. If you are thirsty for God and you read his word and you study the Bible with such a hunger as if you're searching for treasure, you will get such a re reward. The waters of life, which is everlasting life. Anyone conquering will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowards, those without faith and those who are disgusting in their faith and murderers and sexuality, immorals, and those who practice spirit, spiritism, adulterers, and all liars will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. That means the second death. And you don't want to be a part of that, do you? He's telling you out there. Like when you go to, when you want that special dish of Wemmel's Ranchelos in the morning at the restaurant, because that's your favorite food and you're just going after it. Go after God's word with that same hunger. Go after it. This Bible has a veil treasure. You open it up, it's a treasure. The, the words jump out at you, the pages. Nobody knows this, but there's a spiritual veil. There's a spiritual world out there that you cannot see. If you walk by faith and not by sight, you'll be able to feel it. When you learn about Jesus Christ and you accept him in your heart, you'll be able to walk down the street, when you see a brother, when you talk to a brother, you're going to know what that brother's about because you're going to feel his aura, his, his spirit. You'll know he's either holy or he is unholy. Sometimes people see me and they go, oh, well, there comes the Pope. Or sometimes people that talk to me, they know. They know I'm holy. They know I have the Holy Spirit in me. They know I'm not perfect. I sin like everybody else. But that doesn't stop me from believing in Jesus Christ. There's people out there 
that uh, they just they just don't get it. But I pray for them. I pray that they will find Jesus. That they will it'll help. He'll help heal you. He helped me get over my father's death, pretty much. He helped me to understand where my where my dad is. There are so many of you out there that are suffering over a loved one that has passed away, our mother, our father. And every day you suffer. But if you really understood where they're at right now, there's a veil, a spiritual veil. There's this earth, and then there's a veil that you cannot see, but your heart can see it. They're with us every day. They're with us every day. And uh, just find Jesus Christ. Accept him into your heart. And you're going to be all right. Lord, I want, let's, let's pray for all the sick people today. Uh, let's all uh, Bow our heads and pray for the sick people that are out there today that are suffering from different things, illnesses. This virus that's going around, uh, they're making up more viruses as they go. I believe it's to control us. There are some relatives at ours that went out to L.A. to a funeral of somebody who died, and they all had the shots. And they still got the coronavirus. And they're sick right now. So my prayers to them. You know. Dear Lord. As we bow our heads. Dear Lord. I pray to your son Jesus Christ. That you will heal the people in LA. That have come down with this COVID virus. Or any other virus. I ask. That your angels. Go to every person's door. That believes in you. Has faith in you. And even ones that don't. Guard them from this virus to keep it from coming into their lives. I ask this in your name. Amen. If you accept Jesus Christ in your life, I truly believe that he'll protect you. He'll send a seal on your forehead. You'll be written in the book of life. And there is a book of life up there. But everybody's name in it for everything that you've done. And uh, when you're 62 years old, years old like I am, you start to think about what is more important in life. Music, yeah, it's important to me. I'm recording another song, which, yeah, I'm going to do at the end of this month. But that cannot be the main mission. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. When my father... I followed my father around since I was 10 years old. He would go from one place to another getting his music done or some places he would go to practice or recording studio that I got to see one time that he took me to where they made records. I saw all the hard things he had to go through in the music business. It was a struggle for him all the way until he became a comedian and later on in his life. All I ever wanted was from my father was his love. I saw my father every year after my parents divorced when I my teenage years. And it was hard on all three of us kids. We lived in the heart of LA. We lived in North Hollywood where you had your Crips, your Bloods, your gangs, all different kinds of gangs. Thank God that my mother during the divorce, moved us to Santa Monica, California, to the beach. And that's when my life changed. That's when a lot of things happened for me. I went to Santa Monica High, which was next to the beach. I was into surfing and all kinds of nice things. And uh, it, it changed for the better for us three kids. Of course, my sister and brother ended up going back to Florida and live with my dad. But I saw my dad every every year, or every two years, or every three years, sometimes every five years. 
He was mostly a telephone dad in my life. Because of his music career and, and the life he chose. When my father died, part of the music died in me also. Because I wanted to be just like him. Probably because I just wanted his love. I realized because I wanted his love so much that I took up guitar and started playing. I wanted to be just like him. I wanted him to love me, accept me. Well, that all died, basically, except for the music part. That, that's me. That's who I am. I realize that now. I have a love for playing guitar, a love for playing music. But a part of it died when my father died. Don't ask me how. I just feel maybe because, like I said, I wanted his love. So I wanted to be just like him because of my love. Maybe because of my love for him. Who knows? Maybe because I wanted him to be proud of me. Who knows? But all you need is the love for Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is my true father. He is my father. And I know that now as an adult, who my father really is. We have an earthly mother and we have an earthly father. But our real father is back where it all started from before we came to this earth. In heaven, he's there. He's there. And one day, Jehovah God, Yahweh, Yahweh, whatever you want to call him, the Old Testament says Jehovah Yahweh. In Hebrew. The Catholics took a lot of took out the word Jehovah. They only have it in there one time. One time they have it in their Bible. Through the Hebrew translations of the of back then, when they wrote in Hebrew and Arabic, Jehovah was, was in every just about every page of the Bible. But is Jehovah is God's true name. His son, Jesus Christ. Well, we can say that spiritual power that's out there. Which, what is God? Love. Remember that. God is love. So, what do you want to show that person next to you today? Love. When you're showing them love, you're showing them the love of Jesus Christ that's in you. Anyway, so accept Jesus Christ in your heart today. Uh, get on your knees at night. Uh, look at this. I'm turning to these pages, and boom, here's another another scripture. Here's another, another, another scripture. Matthew. 13, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field that a man found and hid. And because of the joy, he goes and sells everything he has and buys the field. Now, there has to be some kind of meaning to this. I the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. We know that. It's hidden in the field. Those very people find it. That's what that probably means. That a man found and hid. So he found this treasure. And he hid it. And because of the joy, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that field. Ah, so he because he found the joy from that treasure that he hid in the field. He goes and buys that field so that he can always have that joy. You tell me what to make of that, Matthew forty four, before you get to forty five. 
45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a traveling merchant seeking fine pearls upon finding one pearl of huge value. He went away and promptly sold all the things he had and bought it. Ah, okay, so that gives us a better idea. The kingdom of heaven is like a traveling merchant seeking fine pearls upon finding one pearl, which means that one special pearl, which is the kingdom of heaven and the joy of it and its high value of that joy. He went away and promptly sold all the things he had and bought it. He gave everything he had just to be a part of that kingdom. I get it. Again, in 47, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet let down into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. When it was full, he hauled it up into the, on the beach, setting it down. They collected the fine ones into containers. The unsuitable they threw away. Wow. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet. So God puts that king dragnet down into the sea. We are the, we are we're in this sea of life, and He gathers the fish of every kind. He gathers every person of every kind. When it is full, He hauls it up into the beach, which is heaven, and sitting it down, He collects the fine ones into containers maybe that's in god's house each house who knows <laughs> wow jesus was something when he was down when he was on i wish i could have been i wish i could have seen him speak you know Is there anything in here I can give you before I close? Before I close today, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, maybe I can give you guys something from 2 Timothy, but. I guess. Well, I guess we'll wait for another time. In close, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you don't know Jesus, find him today. And find him quick because there's not much time left. The things that are going on in this earth, uh, they're trying to keep us blinded by uh, giving out money and things like that, which is fine for people that need it. You know, hell, I, hell, heck, I needed it. I got myself a new car because my other car was shot. That was a blessing of God. Definitely a blessing from God and a blessing from Juan Scott that's helped me in my life. And I keep mentioning his name over and over again because and him and, and uh, Gilbert Artis that's helped me out on, on things. God knows how many Whataburgers he give, he's given to my daughter as she grew up. Every time she'd ask to go, he'd always be there to give her a Whataburger, get bring her something from Whataburger, you know. And then it, you know, you, you've got to hang on to the folks that have been a blessing in your life. Don't let them go. Don't let them go. Because they're be they're there for you when you really need something and you're you're in trouble. They show their true colors as Christians and they're there for you, and they do it for the love of God. And they know that God rewards them for what they do. And this guy Juan Scott and his wife came out one time and repaired my car, my old Ford Explorer. They actually took out the water pump, put back in the water pump into it, and they helped me with that. They, 
the both of them worked as a team and came out and did that for me. For me. Uh, Mark Weber took me to pick up a battery I don't know, years ago when I need a battery for my car. Another Christian. Christians are out there. They're out there. Now we've got to set an example. Now we've got to do things. I mean, I give change to people that are out there on the street every once in a while. Uh, I need to give them more of God's word so that they have something to hang on to. Money they can take and buy a beer or buy some food and that's it. But they've got nothing spiritual to hang on to. We need to let them know about Jesus Christ. I need to start moving into that direction. We have to give them hope and not a meal or which is fine, you know. But we got to give them something more spiritual. Anyway, God bless you all. I want to thank you all for, for tuning in and hopefully we'll uh, talk about some things at another time, which I hope we can. Uh, it was good it was good to, to finally get into studying God's word again. And uh, I'm glad I was able to do that. Oh, looks like he's got me on another scripture of the Lord here. Second Timothy three, let's see. But know this, that in the last days, critical times hard to deal with will be here. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, hiding, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, disloyal, having no natural affection, not open to an agreement, slanderous without self-control, fierce without love of goodness, betrayers, headstrong, puffed up with pride, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Uh, that describes a lot of us men, doesn't it? It's something we have to to kind of steer away from. Don't be bashful. We're not all perfect. We all stumble on this. Okay. We all love sex. It's a part of life. It's a part of us. It's a part of what a man is. But we have to do it properly and with someone that we love. We'll probably enjoy it a lot more. Having uh, peers gotten this, but proving false. A lot of false Christians out there. I had one that uh, I said that he was a Christian and he was he's doing his country music. And he burned me on a gig, never repaid me. But yet he was a Christian. I'm still waiting for him to come to my door and apologize. I love him still, even though he did what he did. I'm not going to hate the man. I'm still going to have to show him love, Jesus Christ. But I can't trust him again. If you can't live, if you can't, if you're on, if you're going to hire somebody to do a gig for you, to play, uh, who's going, you know, to play for you, you got to pay him. Plain and simple. There's no excuses for it. There's no, well, I needed this for that and this happened or that happened. It's a business. Like my father always said, there's the music part and then there's the business part. You got to pay your workers. Uh, but that's how the business is. But I still love that person. I still care about that person. I would still play with that person today. I would forgive them, but yet I will not trust them. I need to be around, be around people that I can trust, godly people that I can trust. I'm sure that brother will maybe one day be a man enough to come apologize or pay me. If you read six, from among these are men who slyly work their ways into households and captive weak women loaded down with sin. There are men out there that will, that are not married, that slyly work their way into households of women that are married and load them down with sin in those days. 
led by various desires, always learning and yet never able to come to an accurate knowledge of the truth. So you see, it's how, this is how people will be. This is Timothy describing how people will be in the last days. Okay? And on that, we will close. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. God bless all of you. And I will try to bring more Bible studies and more Bible talks because I made a commitment on one of my retreats, the last retreat I believe it was, that I would try to have more teachings on Facebook about God, about Jesus, uh, and the wonderful things that he does for us. And I hope that I can do this. How can I describe it? I hope that this gets me into the gates. I hope that what I do gets me into heaven. Because right now, that's pretty much all I'm concerned about. It's not as much as the music anymore. It's not as much as playing in a band. That's not going to happen. I'm already 62 years old. I wouldn't mind playing with a couple of guys and having some fun. I, I probably wouldn't even charge anybody if I was to play with their band and, do, and, and help out. It's, it's all about the family now, my grandson now. A lot of things are changing, and I just want to do what's right in God's eyes so that I may get in to the road that is straight and narrow and that not many people find it. Anyway, God bless you all.